And welcome back to the conclusion of our first look at variant campaign styles for the Down Below RPG. My name is Steve. And I'm Ian. And together we are building this role-playing game one video at a time. So, let's talk about the prelude. And let's talk about character creation. Yep. Because in this role-playing game, character creation is your backstory. So if you're going to play out that backstory, if you're going to play out the process of falling into the Down Below world, why not create your character on the fly? There is the perfect opportunity in this game to do that because you don't actually have to start with your traits defined. It's true. We've mentioned before that you can change out traits as is appropriate. Well, if you have a character sheet that is a blank list of traits, you can tra change out blank for something that seems appropriate to the character concept you have in your head, that you're playing out as you go, and the first time you use a trait, that's the trait. It's true. There have been some experiments in casual play with stuff like D&D &D for this. One approach is to completely leave your character sheet and class blank until you try something. Oh, I'm going to try lifting the rock. All right, roll your strength. That's your strength score. You're stuck with it now. This is taking that to a narrative extreme. So, in this style of character creation, you have the ten traits that you're supposed to have. Yep. And as you play through the scenario, the GM will work with you to say, okay, you want to do this, you will need to succeed or fail if you are going to go in, if you're going to take that action. If you choose to succeed, what would make your character good at that? You can suggest something and the GM works out with you whether that's a reasonable trait to have and yep. then you've defined something about your character you can give a little bit of a background to well i learned this blah and then boom this puts a fair burden on the gm though because as with any character funnel and development through create a creation through development system you need to have the opportunities for the character to show different sorts of development they can't simply uh, you, you can't simply throw them down an endless hallway of mooks and expect to have accountants come out the other end. What's going to happen is if you throw them through an endless hallway of combat, you're going to have battle-hardened combatants come out the other end, not well-rounded characters. Now, if you want to have a game that focuses on combat and violence, then by all means have plenty of challenges based on that, but scale this to the types of things that you want people to maybe be good at. If this is, uh, well, we talked yesterday about the idea that you should have an end game in sight for the prelude. If this game is destined for a gumshoe campaign, what you need to do is give the players plenty of opportunity to develop those traits that will be useful for gumshoes. If it's developed towards the enforcers, you need to give them the plenty of opportunity to develop the tools they need to become enforcers. Maybe not good enforcers, but enforcers, so they're not fish out of water. And if they decide to solve their mysteries by bashing heads in, and if they decide to uphold the status quo by investigating things and finding out the answers to all sorts of uh, questions and mysteries, then, well, that was their choice, and you've respected their agency. Also, you, the DM, you're not actually required to let them know what the game is developing towards. This can be something that unfolds as you go, which gives you the freedom to change your mind. If you had your heart set on a bloody tale of roaring revenge, and the players seem way more interested in film noir regrettable gunshots on a dark bridge, there's absolutely nothing saying that you can't change on the fly and uh, and uh, take the uh, take the adventure you had planned and reskin it for the way that the characters seem to want to go. Which brings us to our most important thing to track in the resource in the uh, prelude style of game. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to track the progress of the story towards beginning, because the prelude is before the main story. Yep. And depending on the type of story, this will be somewhat different. But, uh, for example, if you're going for possibly a fugitive story, then you might want to have a zero can go positive or negative tracker for have the players pissed off the person who might chase after them and make them fugitives. Yep. 
Or if you are going for an agent story, you might want to have a have the players impress their employers enough to get assigned. Or, honestly, have the players impress the uh, employer little enough to get shuffled off into a thankless backwater position. Equally likely. Most of these trackers will actually be of that positive or negative sort, where you will need both a positive and a negative benchmark, because the players can succeed or fail their way through the, pro the prologue, the prelude, and you might be starting even the same story on very different notes, depending on yep. what tone they've set with the scenes that they've gone through. And in the future, uh, we'll be talking briefly in uh, one of Ian's next mechanics seg segments about how to establish benchmarks on one of these scales. Right now we're just talking about their existence and things to track, but we've been mentioning these concepts, and right now, you're right, we haven't really given you some concrete examples of that. And another last thing to mention that I'll go into in much more depth later is that the concept of failing forward does lead to the possible scenario where players might decide that they just want to fail at a lot of things because they can fail unlimitedly except for the consequences they get from failure. So being so harsh with the consequences is often tough for a DM, but very important. Yeah, so we'll talk about how to use that appropriately and when to let them fail as much as they like and when to tell them if you fail here that may be it for your character yep and that relates to the pro the prelude style because in the prelude style you're probably going to be a little bit less harsh with failures than you would be in the main story it's true after all, it's theoretically possible that the players have some level of script immunity and are a little bit aware of it, but it's even more likely that you're training up a new batch of players. Either way, you probably want them to still have these characters, even if beat up and messed up. It's true. In the main story, you're probably not running George R. R. Martin does cyberpunk noir, but if you are, feel free to kill off their characters and make them start new ones in the main story. Because anybody can fall through the cracks. And thank you for doing it with us.